Welcome to the Organized Entrepreneur Podcast, where we dive deep into the art of launching and streamlining your podcast and business for impact and growth. I'm your host, Eldrima Harper, a seasoned professional organizer with more than two decades of experience in transforming chaos into calm and order. After launching three podcasts, I'm here to share with you my insider tips and proven strategies so that you can avoid the pitfalls that I've had to overcome. So whether you're just starting out and looking to enhance your existing endeavors, this podcast will equip you with the knowledge and the tools that you need to work more efficiently, thereby creating more time and more freedom in your life and business. So join me as we explore actionable steps to not only launch, but maximize your business and podcast potential. Let's make success a part of your story. You ready? Let's go. I just absolutely love it. I just absolutely love it. And I talk about it every time you guys come. So anyway, but welcome to the show. I'm excited to have Trey and Gina here joining me again. Hopefully it is not the last time. Let's talk about what you guys are up to now. Let's talk about the business first, and then we're going to talk about ripple effects. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for having us, first of all. It's a pleasure to be here again. I feel like yeah, it's been six months since the last time. Yeah, it feels like it was like not that it long It feels ago. like it was like yeah. a lot more recent, but that went by pretty fast. It did. It really did. Yeah. Yeah. Friends. That's because yeah. we're always we're always we're always thinking about each other. We're always, you know, just kind of in the same. I can't think of the word I want now, but you know, what is it? Telepathic or something? Is that the word I'm thinking about? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So go ahead. Let's 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 see what is going on with you guys. Let's talk about the business. Go ahead and share what you guys do for those who you know don't know. I would say that I think we talked a little bit about it last time, but for anyone new who's listening, we do podcast and social media management for female owned wellness brands. And so in a nutshell, what we do is make your podcast sound crispy, take out the ums, make you sound professional, and we help you to promote it on social media. So, you know, creating podcast snippets out of your episodes and increasing your visibility and reach with that. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Were you going to add something to that, Trey? No, that was great. (laughs) That was great. (laughs) We get your podcast to industry standard. We get those juicy sound bites, those things that are very clickable, very quotable, those things that stand out and we just make sure they pop and we love to. Yeah. We put some pretty cool people and it makes our job way more fulfilling when people really stand behind something positive and yeah. and it's something that we can like learn from like for example yeah. just something off the top of my head he was editing a podcast the other day and there was a guided meditation at the end of it and he did it along with yeah. editing so that's kind of cool to be able to work with you know these type of brands that we resonate with and we can learn from and grow from while we're working. Yeah, that is so cool. Now, I don't know if we talked about how you guys got started in that business. Let's go ahead and share that with the listeners as well. How did you guys get started? Well, this is, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So (laughs) I guess we can go back to kind of the beginning. So we, he started our business long before we started traveling abroad and it started out as a record label and that was when we were living in atlanta georgia and then we moved to the philippines and at the time i was still i was teaching but i was teaching english online because we had moved abroad and it just so happened that the wi-fi was really bad where we were living in the philippines so i had to quit And kind of had like a quarter life crisis moment and was like, what am I going to do? And he told me, you know, 
we have this business, we need marketing. Why don't you do that? And I just fell in love with. So I said, we need a website. We need a website. Yeah. And you're like, okay, what do we do? And <laughs> we yeah. kind of did some research, but anyways, like she's always been very crafty and very creative with like just making things and scrapbooking and collages. And that really translated to the website or at least what she started like doing and Digitally, seeing yeah. and seeing what she enjoyed. She's like, oh, you can transfer this. And that's kind of when it started with the like the graphic and the visual part. Mm -hmm. And fast forward to the pandemic, we were all we were all inside and we were just like really honing these skills and growing and the yeah. audio, the graphic design, the SEO, she was doing a lot of copywriting as well. And we were except we actually We'll talk about our podcast. Our last episode, we or a few episodes ago, we talked about how we were doing these things separately. And like under Wave, they were, it was like he was doing music production or audio engineering projects for artists. And mm -hmm. I was doing copywriting through agency work and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. it was like really separate. And it was all under Wave, but it was just like we weren't working together. Mm -hmm. And it, it started to have some tension. And we also felt like we needed to really come together to see what we can make of Wave. Mm -hmm. And when that moment happened where we're like, we need to come together and, you know, learn how we can merge our skills, think about what our unique selling point is. And also what he said about the pandemic happening, everybody started a podcast. So yes. we're like, oh. everyone started a podcast and then I'm, I'm doing all these audio projects and She's learning social media. And then we're like, oh, well, it should be pretty easy to edit podcasts. So we did some research about that and started pivoting and positioning ourselves as podcast and social media. Mm -hmm. And through our travels, which is a big part of our, our life and our story, is we just started unlearning a lot of things and getting into certain communities that valued wellness and valued just well-being mm -hmm. and obviously she brings in the female piece and she's <laughs> she's introduced me and has connected so many people including you Aldrima it's, it's just a world of female entrepreneurs and females that are just really making a positive impact and that has that's how we've evolved. It's us coming together, her bringing her talents and interests and me bringing my talents and interests. And it's just become this thing that's outside of that. But we had to come together. It Biggest, took a while yeah. to get to where we are, but we, we did it. It didn't happen at once, but we slowly but surely like made it to where we are today. Mm -hmm. And like n now I feel like there aren't a lot of agencies that offer both podcasting and social media assistance. So I feel like what we have to offer is unique. And the fact that, I mean, we are a couple, so that's, that's there as well. Yeah. 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 So, all right. I, I've got two questions. Trey said that there was a lot of unlearning. What are some, what are some things that you had to unlearn? Unlearning a lot. But the few things that really stick out are a our mindset around work mm -hmm. and it's a lot slower the pace is a lot slower in other countries especially the philippines which was our first one mm -hmm. and it was more community driven so unlearning like we got to like fin for ourselves and work 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 and or like a lot of people like a lot of our friends who would see us working would be like, you guys work so much. And like, here we are thinking we've pulled back because we're in the islands and we're like, you guys work so much. And it's like, you know, like, come out, come out. And we're like, <laughs> we work. Yeah. <laughs> like kind of letting ourselves have this balance. Like we we're promoting well-being. We're working with wellness brands and we really want to embody that also. So we mm -hmm. kind of had to both, unlearn like the workaholic yeah. tendency we grew up that's how we you know in the states it's very driven like that especially in the big yeah. cities like chicago so yeah it's go 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 or you gotta gotta Hustle. go if you 
Hustle and yeah. grind, hustle and grind. <laughs> and yeah. That was one big thing we've unlearned. And money mindsets, especially being an entrepreneur and mm -hmm. self-care and just I our perspective around community, which I mentioned earlier, these were some big pillars that we've unlearned and re we yeah. rebuilt it with better or at least broader perspectives. Yeah. And something that I specifically have unlearned is being a, a former teacher. I had a lot of third graders in my ear, like Miss Oliver, Miss Oliver. And it doesn't give you a second to have to yourself and be mindful. And mm -hmm. I really didn't ever practice mindfulness. I didn't really even know what that was until I left that. And I still struggle with that. And I still feel like even if I'm away from that, like my own brain, I think we all have that to some extent is always constantly chattering. And so mm -hmm. I have to consciously practice like, okay, let me just sit here, sit my butt down and like, <laughs> yeah. about all these things, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I love that. That hustle and grind mentality. I mean, I remember, you know, coming up, it was like, like a badge of honor, you know, you ask somebody, you know, so, Hey, you know, what's going on? Oh, I'm busy, busy, you know, hustling and grind. I, I, I hate that word hustle. I've had to learn as I've gotten older, hustle is not, it's not pretty, <laughs> you know, it's not pretty. So, but yeah, that, that's, that's a very, very powerful thing. And I know that you know, the culture, you know, here, of course, you know, I'm in the United States, that's what they, that's what we're being taught. Mm -hmm. You know, we're being taught to be unproductive. So we got to learn how to multitask. When you apply for a job, it's like, if you don't know multitasking, you know, mm -hmm. so I'm like, well, I guess I won't ever work for anybody because I'm horrible <laughs> at multitasking. And that's one of the things that I love teaching people is, is not to, you know, try to stay away from multitasking, but uh, I love that. So one of the things I wanted, as you, as you guys were talking, what is it like working together? Like 24 hours a day, you know, being around each other, working together, living together, you know, all of that. What is that like? You know, because let me tell you, you know, I know people who say, you know, Oh, if I got to spend 24 hours with this man, you know, <laughs> and work together, you know. So what is that like? What is that like? I think that because we, like the first part of our marriage, we were so separate. And even before we got married, we were long distance for so long. And so being able to live together and then to be able to work together and not be, you know, when you have separate jobs and you especially are going into an office, you don't see your significant other mm -hmm. for basically your whole life. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, takes a toll on you. And I think that once we did make the decision to work remotely and be together more, like, I think that we were happier and, you know, of course we, butt heads it's natural and like we're both tourists so like we naturally mm -hmm. you know butt heads and we we have to plan our alone time and our space apart like we we know that we need that and i think that's an important part of it and it's also important that we've kind of realized okay this is like work us and like this is how we're gonna work together and then yeah know, this is our relationship, us, and we're not going to, it's hard to turn off the work talk, it's but we really have hard. to. Yeah. yeah. It's I was going to ask that. It's like, you know, we, we even say it, okay, we're done talking about work. And then yeah. like 15 minutes later, we just like get into it again. And we're just like, no. We're <laughs> yeah. But I think we're fortunate. I think we're very fortunate that we can stand each other and we can stand to be around each other. Yeah. It's not for everybody. And I, yeah understand that as well so i'm i'm not gonna sit here and say oh, everyone can do it but like i i think that we're our story we were long distance for so long and just long for some long to be together for so long mm -hmm. and then when we did move in together it was like wait so we gotta be apart for like 12 hours a day too like wait it doesn't <laughs> feel right so when yeah. we moved like we already started 
being together 24 seven before we really merged Mm -hmm. with the business. So the business kind of just, and everyone did it during the pandemic. So we're like, cool, we are doing it. Like we're already together 24 seven. So yeah. 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 I, I, one thing I would like to mention too, and you were talking about multitasking and kind of like making things less is when we came together with the business, working together on the same client really minimize the extra mental bandwidth. Mm. So we're, we're working on the same content. This podcast was released. So they're talking about this. This is what we're making for social media. This is, it's all connected. And we, yeah. it, it flowed better. And when she said the friction, when we were separate, like we weren't, it wasn't fluid. Now we're working on the same clients. We're all together. We're all on the same page. It's like a team. Yeah. And, and that's something else that a lot of marketing teams, like they're like truly separate. It's just like, there's a copywriter and then there's like a social media manager. Like it's very separate. And like, mm-hmm. whereas we are really like working together, it's like, okay, I'm going to make the script for this, this reel. And then you're going to, you know, edit the audio. And then like, we just pass off the task. Just the other day yeah. I was working on a client and she was working on the client and then we stopped and, and it was like all right switch and i do the <laughs> other half the audio part of the client and you do the graphic part of this client and we like yeah. switch it was like i was like that's pretty cool we weren't doing that three years ago we had a moment and was like yeah so i guess i guess i could stand her 24 <laughs> 7 and like i could do it yeah. <laughs> No, I, I I love that. I'm I'm one, and I I know I've shared this with probably you know both of you guys before. You know my my husband and I we launched a business together. We have been married for this this year would be 26 years, but we love being together. You know, love, and I'm a homebody, and so you know, but th- so there are times when I I know that you know he needs his time because. Anytime, you know, he gets, you know, home from work or whatever, I'm here. (laughs) So I get my time alone. He gets his time alone if he's, you know, out working or whatever. But it's different from being able to just like have your space, but also respecting that, you know, we're one, but we're also individuals, Mm -hmm. you know. And so that's so, so important. That doesn't mean, you know, he loves me less or I love him less or anything like that. You know, but there's times when, you know, we're not talking, not because we're mad or anything, but just because, you know, he he's processing whatever I'm processing, whatever. And we're able to come together. But that has been that has worked for us, you know, for the past 20, 20, almost 26 years. Now we had to get to that point. (laughs) We got married later in life. I was 30, 39 and he was. He's thir- he's four years younger, so he's, th- he's 34, 30. Yeah, the four years difference. And so and so you get to the place, you know, in your marriage where it's like, OK, things just they're clicking like I'm not going anywhere. He ain't going nowhere. So. Can we get your story? We haven't heard your story. Oh, yeah. So my story is that so my husband and I, we knew it's actually interesting. So we met probably like 10 years before we even dated or anything. So we were friends, but we had kind of lost contact with each other over like, like 10 years. And so we met like at his birthday party and he remembers every, he remembers everything I, he had, he remembers what I had on. He remembers what I was, you know, what I looked like, everything. But anyway, (laughs) You know, it was like when I walked into the room, you know, the men all pause, you know, so, but, but anyway, so he, it was his birthday party and I went, you know, with a girlfriend of mine. And so we talked a little bit, like after he called to see, you know, whether I got home, okay. And all that kind of stuff. But then over about 10, 10 years, we kind of lost contact. But one time we ran into each other, he was working for a company and we ran into each other on, on the elevator. And was like, hey, you know, how's it going? You know, blah, blah, blah. So that was, you know, in a few years came, you know, passed by after that. He called me out of the blue. So that was like, you know, 
speeding up, you know, 10 years over the 10 year period. We, mm -hmm. we kind of connected one time, lost connection. He called me out of the blue. Hey, what's going on? How are you doing? And, and I'm the kind of person I never, my phone number has never changed. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he didn't lose my phone number. Anyway, I'm going to condense the story. So he called me out of the blue and he was like, Hey, you know, I was getting ready to go to the movie and just, you know, was, you know, wondering if it's okay. If, if I stop by after I come to the movie, I was like, sure. So he stopped by and I knew then when he came over that he was my husband. I didn't know that at first. I knew it when he came back because at first when when we first met i was like eh, you know eh, you know and so but then when he came back i kept hearing in my spirit this is your husband this is your husband that was like you know 10 years after that it was thanksgiving I, I can't remember how we got to that conversation but it was like over the you know a couple of weeks or whatever i went on a fast and i was talking to the lord and i was like lord i think i hear you if this man is my husband, then you talk to him mm. and have him come to me. Mm. And so two weeks later, he asked me to marry him. Wow. What? <laughs> oh, my yes. God. Wow. Yes. Oh, I yeah. look at you. And he said, he said, he said, and, and, and here's the thing, you know, even though we kind of knew each other, you know, over, you know, 10 years, you know, we were, we were friends, but we lost contact and we, you know, we reconnect and things like that. Mm -hmm. But it, I, I still was like, I didn't want to be in a place of how some people will say, oh my gosh, I know this is my husband. And, you know, they get all spiritual and all this. I wanted to be sure. <laughs> so he asked me, this is how he asked me. He said, you know, you're going to be my wife, right? Wow. That's how he asked me. I said, <laughs> yeah. I said, I know. <laughs> that was yeah. how he proposed and so that's then we started set you know our wedding date and everything like that and got married the following year in september so that's 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 a long but it's a kind of you know the short story yeah that's amazing wow. that's a great yeah. story i yeah. really i really like hearing that Aww. yeah 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 so and we get along beautifully. I think the key in the whole thing is to have the same vision, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, Team Harper, that's what it's all about. Like, I'm sure for you, it's, it's Team Oliver, you know, like, you know, anything outside of that is not working, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So mm -hmm. having the same vision for each other, you know, having, uh, uh, he has a vision for us. He also has a vision for himself. I have a vision for me, but we have, you know, a, a vision for us, you know? So, and so it, it just works. We don't even argue a lot. You know, people, I was going to tell you this because people tell us the same thing. People tell me or they tell him that we look alike. <laughs> and I think you guys look alike. Oh my I'm God. not kidding. We're morphing. I've been telling her That's that. I'm thing. like, I, I think it's, I think it transcends race. I think we spend yes. so much time together. Yeah. All, all the things we do is together. <laughs> yeah. I really think we're morphing together. That's I, a yeah. thing. That's a real thing. Yeah. Oh, I do. I do believe that. Cause I, it was, you guys had put something on social media or something one time, or it might've been on Instagram or something. And I, I was sitting there, I was like, and they look alike. <laughs> And you guys do. I mean, you really do. So that's, you know, always a, a beautiful thing. I mean, when people tell me that, it's like, okay, you know, okay. I, you know, I, I take it with, you know, with grace and I embrace that, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. So yeah, it's a beautiful thing. It's really a beautiful thing. So let's, let's move into talking about, we've talked a little bit about your business and, you know, talked about, you know, your story and how you guys work together and, and all that. So how did you move from that to, cause I know initially you didn't have a podcast and you just recently launched a podcast. So tell us about, about that and how that came, how that came about. I think so wave enterprise was his shower thought and ripple effects was my shower thought. I don't gotcha. think the name of it 
The name was my. Yeah. The name was. The name was <laughs> yeah, the it, it's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> the idea. Yeah. The box, to, entire idea. Yeah, start it was was me, and we kind of came together on like, okay, I think it's time to do this. Like we've been, you know, we we do podcasts management for other businesses and it's time for us to have our own and really feel you know what it's like to have a podcast mm -hmm. and to get our message out there and so many people yeah. would ask well do you have a podcast do you have a podcast you guys need a podcast and yeah. after yeah. working on so many helping so many seeing how it really runs from the inside yeah just when she came up she came to me with the idea of us having a podcast and it was like, she mentioned like, we really will have even deeper knowledge, firsthand knowledge if we have our own podcast. And mm -hmm. there are things that we've learned by having our own podcast that we didn't know before. Yeah. There are certain little nuances that we just got firsthand experience and especially setting up like a whole studio and yeah. like we have our portable studio and doing that and like having a video podcast mm -hmm. is different from what we have done with our clients at least but and it's very smooth because we've yeah. done it so much and yeah. are so it's our baby but it's like we i think we could flip a switch because when it's time to edit it it's just like boom 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 and then it's time to do the show notes so it's like we're just like a machine and it's like, oh, wow, like, we just did that so quickly. And it's like, yeah, well, we do yeah. it all the time. So Yeah. Yeah. So what are some what are some things that you see that what are some mistakes that you see podcasters make? Mm. Mm -hmm. Good question. I think that the podcast quality, the audio has to be. I mean, you don't need a whole expensive setup, but I think just knowing little, you know, ways to to enhance your your audio, because we've all heard a podcast episode where there's like screechy noises and like stuff in the background. And we don't want to listen to the whole thing because it's hard to hear it or it's just hard to listen to. It doesn't resonate with us. And I feel like that's definitely a big deal just like off the bat yeah i think that is a big deal i also think that it may be hard if you don't have the resources or the setup to avoid so if the message is there and the quality isn't i think the message can still shine through but i think audio quality is really important the first thing that popped in my head was intro length mm. I think sometimes yeah, if you're starting one. the episode at five minutes, like you, <laughs> yeah. you lost me. Like, yeah, I'm sorry. And even with the feature that you can speed it up, it's like, we're what's up And some podcasts yeah. have sponsors. And, and I think that's cool and all, but with the overall flow, the first like three minutes should be concise, concise, the intro, yeah. the opening quote, and then getting into the episode, what the episode is about. Like it should be, Pretty quick. Yeah. So think. how how so how long okay, how long should their intro be? You think, like I think thirty seconds, a minute? Yeah, I think thirty seconds. Thirty to like, thirty seconds to a minute is, I or think, less, even fifty nine seconds or less. Yeah, I, <laughs> fifty nine. <laughs> I think sometimes a minute is tasteful, depending on like what the podcast is it, what is what it is, but. It I've, also I've, heard, I've seen some five minute long intros and it's like yeah it's too long <laughs> oh I would get lost yeah. Yeah. yeah I would yeah there's no cookie cut right. but I think yeah. thirty seconds to sixty seconds is very it's a sweet spot yeah. ours is like six seconds it's just like boom <laughs> get right into yeah. it yeah and I think you're right I mean you know when you say there's no you know no cookie cut or but you also have to pay attention to, you know, your listeners and understand, like, especially now we have a short attention span. Like, you know, I mean, even if like, you know, watching a movie or something, it's like sometimes I'm sitting there, I'm like, okay, can we get to the meat of this show? 
<laughs> you know, if the intro is too long, you know, it, yeah. it just really, and I, I don't think I've always been that way. I don't, I don't know, but I, I know now it's, it's my my attention span when it comes to things like that. It's it's like this is too long. Now I I re redid my uh, podcast episode. I think having talked to you guys, I may have to redo my episode, my intro. <laughs> I don't want to say that. And if your if your intro is longer than a minute, I don't want. I really don't want to send the wrong anyone listening or you as well. But like. Like you said, we have short attention spans. And as podcasters, yeah. it's like I said, it's not cookie cut. It, it, a five minute intro, if that works for you and your audience is engaged, do it. Yeah. I think that's the most important part. Like knowing that your audience is ga- engaged, then that's, and that's we have, what you want. We have tools, we have analytics that yeah. show you literally how long they listen to your podcast. And if that's they're true. dipping before the yeah. intro's off, then maybe change something. Yeah. And if not, keep it. Yeah. Because I don't want you to feel bad either. I've, your <laughs> intro, we actually really enjoy your intro to your podcast. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That means a lot coming from you guys. That really does mean a lot, you know. But I, I but you know, I, I am definitely with you, you know, on that paying attention to your audience, you know, looking at your analytics, you know, and, and all of that is so, so important when it comes to that. So Here's another question. So video or audio, which one, which podcast you like best? I know you guys do, do video podcasts, right? So mm-hmm. does that mean you like video podcasting better? I, I prefer to consume video because gotcha. like if I'm like doing the dishes or something, maybe not, but like if I'm like waiting for my meal to cook or like whatever, I like to see at least the words on the screen, like some apps like Spotify, like will put the transcript on there or like some people will have like the audiograms. I like to see something while I'm listening. At least that's like the type of learner I am. Gotcha. What about you, Trey? Exactly the same, exactly the same. I think that as far as strategy is concerned, I think video podcast is powerful because you can still upload it. And if your listener is doing the dishes or doing something where they can't watch, they can still listen. Mm-hmm. And then if they want to, they have the option. They have the. Uh, I like having the option to option. watch it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, I would, I would agree with that. Yeah. What are some other things that, for the sake of the listeners who? who's, you know, launching a podcast or, or whatever, what are some other things that you can share with them, you know, that would help them to do a better job with their podcast? I think like something that what the question that you asked earlier is like, what, what are some mistakes? I think something else that a lot of people who are starting, especially if they're setting up their podcast in a way to have guests on is just trying to get all these people and not vetting the people, not vetting the Mm. guests, not not even building a relationship with them first and just like getting on this call. And, you know, like we know you well, like we have a relationship and we have a good vibe together. And, you know, people feel that they hear that through the the screen. They know that we have a relationship and, you know, it could be an awkward conversation or awkward energy on a call when you have never met the person like virtually or you know you just don't know them at all and so i think that spending some time which it does take time to vet guests and build that relationship but i think it is important because i mean you want you want that good vibes in your your episodes yeah yeah, I'm thinking about when she mentioned your question earlier, I'm thinking yeah. about some things, too. And it's not mistakes. I have a couple things I actually mm-hmm. want to say. It concise. Mm-hmm. I mentioned intros, outros as well. Mm-hmm. I, I've seen and we recently come across some some people tend to and I don't think it's been any of our clients per se, but some people tend to put too many call to actions in their outro. Ah. And that, also loses the listener if they have too many options they won't take one so that's right if you do have a a 
uh, multiple things or multiple actions you want your audience to take, like breaking it up and having different outros and like rotating between them. I think that's a good piece of advice for technical. A little bit more abstract is like when people come to us and inquire about services, it's usually because they have a business that's been established, it's growing and they have a platform, they have an audience and they're like, I think now is the time to start a podcast. I think because I have services, I think the podcast will generate Mm -hmm. traffic or more traffic to my business and that allows them to have clear messaging it allows everything to like the ctas mm -hmm. the the conversations when you are vetting guests it's all intentional so everything kind of flows from there and like we kind of have an ongoing joke like nowadays everyone has a podcast and like everyone's starting a podcast and it's just kind of like just people are just throwing stuff at the wall and seeing if it sticks but i yeah. feel like a few, and even if it's not, if it's not like backed by a business, if you want to start a podcast and you're listening to this, like, what is it that you're passionate about? What is it that you want to talk about? And like, write it down, write out some mm -hmm. thoughts about it before mm -hmm. start. So like, there is some mm -hmm. cohesion and there, there are times where you kind of just like learn as you go. Mm -hmm. But I feel like having some kind of clear identity or a clear like message yeah makes everything fall into place yeah yeah absolutely absolutely what are some audio tips from a sound engineer perspective what are some audio tips would you that you would have for us <laughs> well you're doing one way better than us right now you got a really nice mic right there i think that <laughs> that's a really that's a really sound investment if you want to be a little step above beginner podcaster, a little more serious, invest in a mic. If, if you can't, or if you are doing remote remote interviews like via Zoom or something like this, this is way mm -hmm. cooler. Prompting your guests to make sure they're at least close enough to the screen or telling them to have headphones, like we're doing this together so we can't have our headphones, but like making sure they have maybe a mic on the headphone or they're in a room where there's stuff on the wall. So like, it doesn't echo too much. You can prompt your guest. Mm -hmm. So there's some, some actions you can take prior to the interview that mm. could get the best possible. And, and if all else fails, hire someone that yeah. knows what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that part. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I think I've covered what I could think about off the yeah. top. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gina, so I want to ask you, since you handle a lot of the social media, you know, stuff, what are some things that, what are some things that you see out there people are doing and you, maybe you, when you see it, you like cringe? I guess just kind of like being all over the place with the video content mm. with your, your episodes and like, you know, one video have like just some completely different branding and then it's just like mm. not identifiable and it all needs to be either clearly visually representative of your business if your podcast is part of your business or your podcast needs to have its own branding so like for mm. us we have the same branding for our our podcast as we do our business and so it's very clear that that's part of our business mm -hmm. And I think that's a biggie. That's good. Hmm, what else? Mm -hmm. I don't want to cut you off, but I, I just keep hearing this concept of cohesion. And like, we're mm. one thing we yeah. keep, we both keep saying is like everything like needs to be the same, whether it's the messaging, the branding, the audio levels, everything yeah. should be cohesive. And yeah. yeah. That's what keeps people engaged, whether it's scrolling through social media or listening. And that's what makes people remember your brand mm -hmm. is when, oh, I saw them on Facebook, but then I also saw them on Instagram and it looks the same. I know it mm -hmm. and they keep popping up. So I'm going to remember them now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You see something like, oh, that must be so-and-so, you know? Yeah. 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 I, saw the, I saw the graphic that 
you guys put together for the next event. And it's like, oh, that yeah. was, oh, I loved it. I was uh, like, okay. That's what we're talking about here. Like, you see that, you're like, who are they? What are they doing? <laughs> Yeah, when I saw it, I was like, okay, yeah. Because, I mean, I'm not, you know, I definitely am not a, you know, a graphic artist by, you know, by no means. I do the best that I can. It's like when we're always in our head and stuff, you know, and, and then we see something that someone else, when someone else does it, like when Gina, you know, did that and I looked at it, I was like, wow. I mean, I just, you know, it was just like, this is popping. <laughs> it's, it popped. So, I mean, I absolutely, absolutely loved it. I, I guess I, I hadn't had a chance to tell you that, but yeah. Because I put it in, I mean, you know, as soon as I got it, you know, I put it, you know, in the in the group and on the event, you know, and all of that. It was like, yeah, it's, it's time to, you know, change that, you know. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah that's, that's awesome. Right. Yeah. Yeah. For our listeners, make sure that you attend our free networking event with Aldrima and I. Yes. It's on the 21st of May, yes. depending on when this airs, but every month. Yes, yes, yes. We love meeting, you know, new people and uh, it's it's a lot of fun. We meet people from all across, you know, the globe and everything. So, yeah. So what are some some parting thoughts that you you guys may have that, it, if we got off the call, you think, oh, man, I wish we had covered that. Well, something that I want to say to anyone listening, I actually posted this in our Facebook group today, which is. If you feel like you should start a podcast, you should do it. Just yeah. do it like you can figure out all the things along the way. Yes, you should have high quality audio. Yes, you should have a strategy. You should have all the things, but you will figure it out and you should do the thing. Otherwise somebody else will do the thing. So whatever it is, just put yourself out there and yeah. Yeah. That was fine. That was, she took it. She stole my, (laughs) I'm so glad. I'll double down on it because it may contradict some things we said in the episode before. These are technical tips, especially if you want to level up. But if you have the itch or the urge to start a podcast, even if you don't have the messaging, even if it's not audio quality, no mic, nothing, do it, start it, no team, just do it and see and learn along the way. It is a playground. At the end of the day, we're big kids and making splashes. And if you have if you have that, do it. Yeah. We're doing it. And that's yeah. how we met. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. I know I said this was the, 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 those were parting thoughts, but did we talk about how you guys came up with the name Ripple Effect? Did we specifically? No. I don't want us to. Yeah. It I want us more, to lose that. More so a shower thought. We were thinking about it because she, we started talking about the podcast and like, mapping it out and then we're like we need a name because it's all about connections and how everybody is connected and Mm -hmm. how one connection could lead to another opportunity another connection and it's a never-ending cycle a never-ending thing and we all have a part in it yeah and i was thinking water wave okay wave enterprise Well, ripple effect. I was like, there's ripples in water. I was like, okay, ripple effect. I'm like, there's probably so many things out there with ripple effects. So like FX, we do audio visual. You add effects to audio and visual. I'm like, ripple effects, ripple effects. <laughs> and then I told her and I told her about the spelling. She was like, that's it. And I was like, let's do it. Ripple effects. Yeah. <laughs> I love the name. I love it. I love, I mean, I love how, because like when you talk, you guys talk about cohesiveness, you know, your brand and your business, which is Wave and, you know, Ripple Effect. I mean, it's just all cohesive. You know, I just think about water and island and, you know, trees and, well, I don't don't really like trees because trees have bugs, but, (laughs) but... But I do, you know, I just think about, you know, island and and that, you know, type of living and and things like that. And so, I mean, you definitely 
are living, you know, your brand. It's very cohesive how you guys are living, you know, your brand, your podcast, your business, all of that is just one cohesive thing. And I just, I just really love it. I love it. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Start by listening and subscribing to the podcast. Simply go to organizedpreneurpodcast.com. And also...